Hi, I'm just going to run you guys through how I've set up my 2022 KTM 300 EXE for our upcoming New Zealand Hard Enduro Championships. So uh, I guess we'll start off with the, with the chassis stuff, um, suspension. So obviously for Hard Enduro racing, generally we want a, a softer setup. So nice soft suspension, lots of traction, soaking up the rocks, the bumps, the tree roots, keeping the back tire on the ground. Um, our hard enduros in New Zealand aren't crazy hard, like it's not gold class Red Bull Romaniac sort of stuff. So we still get going quite quickly at, at times. So it's not, I haven't got run as soft as I would say, like if I was gonna go ride Erzberg or something like that, not that I'm ever gonna do that anytime soon. Um, so yeah, kind of a semi hard enduro setup. So at Moto SR, I've done the, uh, done the suspension for me. Um, they're yeah, really, really happy with the setup. Um, basically gone back to like an old school um, twin, uh, open chamber setup, so away from the se separate function setup. Uh, I've got the um, bladder conversion in the back, which makes it a, a, a bit more supple, kind of absorbs the square edges a bit better, kind of makes the bike track a bit better. So yeah, it's, it's not a super crazy soft hard enduro setup, it's kind of soft-ish. A good sort of all-round sort of setup, and I've, uh, it gives me a lot of ad adaptability as well. So if it's going to be a faster race, a few more clicks of compression, front and rear, and I can kind of firm the thing up a bit more, and uh, it's going to look after me more on the open stuff. Um, then when I know it's going to be a, a more difficult, slower speed race, I can open up that compression, get it a bit more supple, and there's a lot of adaptability here. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, of course, up the top here, I'm running my x trig clamps. Um, they have a bit more flex than stock. Um, obviously, they look real good firm grip of the fork, but a bit more flex, so it kind of makes it a, the bike, I don't know, just makes it feel nice. Um, it kind of tracks a bit easy, tracks a bit straighter, that sort of thing, doesn't deflect quite so much. Um, I'm running my XRC steering damper, uh, bike stabilizer, and uh, the PHDS mount, so the, the anti-fatigue mount, so they give the bike a, a let the bars flex if it takes the sting out of hitting the rocks and the bumps for sort of four or five hours in the hard enduro races. Basically makes life a lot easier on my old wrists. Um, handlebars, I'm running the Astra Chris Birch Pro Series bars. Um, obviously I really like these because I got the chance to design my own ones. And they're, uh, compared to stock, they're quite a bit lower. So it puts me into a good sort of strong, aggressive position, gives me lots more room on the bike. Uh, and not too much sweep. So it kind of puts the whole hand grip in my hands rather than kind of leaning too much on my on the heel of my palms. Again, encourages that good, strong, wide elbows, good, uh, aggressive riding style. And I, I really, really like these bars. Obviously, you know, I'm biased that so they set up to how I want them. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a really good opportunity to be able to do that. And they should be back in stock pretty soon. We sold all out of the first run. So the next run should be uh, in stock quite soon. So keep an eye on their website, Astra, or on our website um, when those come back in stock. So I run my levers quite a long way in board. So I'm right out on the end of the controls. Obviously that, that gives me more leverage, more, uh, more power into that front brake, more control, easier feel on the, on the, on the clutch. So quite a long way in board, pretty flat, and uh, running a bit of tape underneath the bars, I'm uh, sorry, underneath the clamps so we could, they'll move in a crash rather than, than snapping off. But just the stock levers, I haven't really felt the need to change them. Um, I'm running a, a single throttle cable, so I've got rid of the return cable. So that just gives it a, a nice soft throttle action. Um, less drag than you get with a twin cable setup, and I, I've never had any problems with the, with the throttle not returning. It, it doesn't seem to be an issue. And I'm running it to the inside of the triple clamps through there rather than at the front here, so less likely to hook on the bushes and as we're, you know, pushing through the bush on these hard enduro races. Yeah. So for tyres, I'm running Mitis, of course, and I've got the TerraForce EH on the back, the two green stripes, so really, really soft. Nice soft moose, loads of traction with that setup. Soft tyre, soft rubber, soft moose, lots of traction, goes up over the rocks and over the tree roots really well. Uh, in the front, I've got the uh, Terra Force EF. Uh, would norm that's a yellow stripe on there at the moment. Uh, we'll probably run the green stripe for the races. Uh, the you know, stock's a bit of an issue worldwide at the moment, especially in New Zealand. So I'm kind of saving the green ones for the races and running the yellows in between. The yellows I find last a bit longer, a bit more durability. I'll, I'll save the green one for the race. 
Uh, two rim locks in the rear. So obviously with a soft mousse, there's not a lot holding the tire on the rim. So we run two rim locks opposite each other, lock that tire onto the rim, no chance of it letting go during the race. Huge amount of modifications. Um, I'm running the clutch on the number one position on the Belva washer. So move that around uh, to get a, a lighter clutch engagement, softer clutch engagement and lighter feel. So turning the, the adjuster around to that one position. Um, I'm running, uh, I've been playing around quite a bit with different flywheel weights. So I've been making my own flywheel weights, a few different sizes, just trying to find that real sweet spot. Um, I think I've got it. We've got one more, one more test this weekend. Uh, once we get those dialed in 100%, I'll, I'll start making some more and they'll be for sale up on our website. Um, they're a really good thing. They kind of, again, just mellow out the power, uh, make it smoother, more tractable, more traction, exactly what we're looking for that uh, hard enduro sort of setup. Just taking out a bit of the snap and, and making the bike more tractable. Um, and the good thing with them as well, they're going to be uh, easily removable. So if you're going to go and do like a more cross country race, you want that snap back, take the weight off, good bikes back to stock again. Um, running a two stroke performance head. All the way from Australia. So that, I've got a lower compression in there. So again, just chasing that smooth, tractable power. Um, yeah, just trying to find traction. You know, that's what hard endurers are all about. Um, so yeah, just trying to make the bike really mellow and, and easy to ride. Um, got uh, hard enduro bike, so it's got a bent and dented exhaust pipe, of course. Um, got to have a dented pipe if it's a hard enduro bike. Um, what else we got? I feel a little bit of pieces, but we won't talk about that. Um, radiator fan, hard enduro prerequisite, um, and that's pretty much it for the. Uh, for the uh, engine setup, to be honest. Basically, stock bike with a few little changes here and there, just to try and mellow out that power and focus it more on the hard enduro setup. Oh, yeah, dulled in my power valve again to try and make that power as smooth as I possibly can. I've got a 12th tooth on the front and a 48 on the rear. Uh, yes, yeah, obviously pretty low gearing, uh, gives you a nice sort of, makes it second gear really usable on the climbs and, and keeps the gear ratios nice and close together. High speeds, you know, top speeds not really an issue, it's just on that tractability and again like first gear is really really low so you can do a lot of the long climbs without having to overwork the clutch too much. You know, keeping the engine temperature down, again keeping the thing tracking, that's what, what it's all about. Um, still running the stock chain guide at the moment, uh, hoping to get a, a stronger one in time for the first round but again a little bit tough at the moment with COVID stuff uh, yeah that'll do a few little bits and pieces um, a lot of good stuff from Acherby's so we've got the Acherby's discard and caliper guard um, they you know they make really really quality stuff uh, we've got the Acherby's bash plate so good coverage uh, I much prefer the plastic bash plates to the uh, to the aluminium ones, the plastic will just sort of slide over the rocks where the aluminium will kind of grab the rocks and sometimes you smack them hard enough the aluminium ones will bend and then they rattle and come loose and that sort of thing. Um, running my XRC ignition cover and clutch cover, so that these are made in New Zealand, super super strong. As you can see, good test. Um, what else? Uh, I've wrapped all the radiator hoses, double wrapped all the radiator hoses with extra bits of hoses to help prevent than being knocked by uh, tree branches and spikes and stuff, so keep the water in the bike. Uh, what else have we done? Uh, tied all the uh, spokes together, so if we break a spoke mid-race, it's not going to flap around the place and, and tear anything apart, so they're just a little bit more protection. Um, yeah, clutch cover on the other side. That's pretty much it. So other sort of hard and dry stuff that you absolutely obviously need. Um, you got your tugger straps, front and rear. Your Krieger tugger strap there. Um, seat cover. These pleated gripper seat covers are really, really important for hard and dry racing. This one's a JW seat cover, so proudly made in New Zealand by, uh, by a motorbike racer. So yep, really good to support those sort of rider brands. And yeah, the big th reason you need a, a grip of seat cover is to save your arms. So on the big long climbs, you're locked in through your seat, able to relax your upper body more rather than sort of holding onto the bike and really notice a, 
a big reduction in, in the fatigue you're going to feel over a long, difficult ride by running a, a gripper seat cover. Um, what else we got? Workshop graphics have done a great job with the sticker kit. I think it looks really good. Really stoked on how the bike looks. Oh, and uh, last but not least, my custom brake pedals that we make. So that brings the brake pedal position a lot further back, lets me get back on the ball on my foot more, and I can still access my back brake without having to get too far forwards on my foot peg. So I, I really like that. It means I can sort of stay back on the balls of my feet and still operate and control my back brake properly. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, not a huge amount of modification. You know, the, I'm really stuck, even as a stock bike, completely standard. I was absolutely blown away by how, how good these new bikes are, the new, uh, new 300s are. So just trying to focus the mods more at, at getting it set up for that hard enduro racing and yeah, really looking forward to getting into some races on this thing.